A topic that I've seen come up time and time again in film photography circles are T-grain films, specifically black and white T-grain films. And usually the discussion goes on for some while and at some point someone will point out how much they hate T-grain films. And this is generally a fairly common sentiment among the black and white film photography community. But the question is why? Why do T-grain or tabular grain films get as much hate as they do? I'm going to try to explain T-grain films as straightforwardly as I can. It's a bit of a complex topic. T-grain films are basically films that use tabular grain instead of conventional grain. And T-grain is actually a name, the phrase T-grain, is something that Kodak came up with for their marketing when they began marketing their line of tabular grain films. Now, tabular grain film is different from conventional cubic grain film in that the actual silver crystals on the film are a different shape. They have a larger surface area across a smaller volume, and they lay flat against the surface of the film stock. Now this different shape gives the crystal slightly more light gathering ability, slightly more sensitivity. And this in turn allows T-grain film to have finer grain and greater resolution so they can capture more detail as opposed to conventional grain films at the same speed. Now all of the film stocks in Kodak's color line of films are T-grain films. And most of the time when people refer to how much they hate T-grain films, they're referring to tabular grain black and white films. And one of the reasons for this is the fact that tabular grain films can often have a very, very sterile, a very clean look to them that is almost bland. For many photographers, it's a bit too boring and dull and a bit lifeless, not very much character. I would say that another reason that T-grain films, at least in today's film photography world, get a bit of a bad reputation is because modern film photographers uh, really seek to embrace a bit of the imperfection, a bit of the film look that comes with some of the flaws of conventional black and white film stocks, like grain, for example. Most T-grain films are absolutely excellent film stocks that deliver fantastic image quality, but they don't play so much into this film look, if that makes sense. Black and white tabular grain films include Fuji's Neopan line of films, all of the films in Kodak's T-Max line of films, and all of Ilford's Delta Professional films. If you are a photographer who isn't a big fan of T-grain films, like Kodak T-Max films, for example, then Kodak's Delta films, especially Delta 400, might be a good film to look at. Ilford Delta 400 is part of Ilford's Delta Professional lineup of films, which includes three different film stocks at different speeds. A Delta 100, Delta 400, and Delta 3200. Now, Delta 400 is a T-grain film, just like Kodak T-Max. 400, and it's one of four 400 speed films that Ilford sells if you count HP5, XP2, and Kentmere, which isn't technically under the Ilford name, but they're all manufactured by the same parent company in Cheshire, England. Delta 400 is available in 35mm format, in 36 exposure cassettes, as well as in bulk rolls and in 120 medium format. And generally speaking, it's a fairly inexpensive option as well that is relatively widely available. Being a T-grain film, Ilford Delta 400 requires a bit of extra care when it comes to developing. And this is often something that is cited as one of the negative points for tabular grain films. And they are more temperature sensitive in the development process than conventional grain film stocks. I developed an Ilford ID11, which is the developer that I use pretty much all of the time. However, according to the information on Ilford's tech sheet for Delta 400, in order to get the best image quality, at least according to them, is Ilfotech DDX. I was overall very pleased with the results that I got from ID11. I developed according to the times listed on Ilford's data sheet for Delta 400, so for nine and a half minutes at 20 degrees Celsius in ID11 stock solution. I agitated as usual for the first 30 seconds and then again, 10 inversions across 10 seconds every minute after that. I used a water stop bath and then I fixed using Ilford Rapid Fixer. Now one of the critiques for tabular grain films that I've also seen come up many times and something that's worth noting is that often 
tabular grain films can require a bit of extra fixing time in order to properly clear up the film base. After I finished fixing the film for seven minutes, I washed it as I always do. To be honest, even though I've read and heard from other photographers that tabular grain films can be a bit trickier when it comes to development, I didn't have any issues handling this film exactly the same as I do any other. I was super precise with my temperature and fixing it for those extra two minutes, so for seven instead of the usual five minutes that I fix my film. As I was hanging the films to dry, and they dried fairly flat, I did notice that the images have a bit more pop and three-dimensionality, at least on the negative, as compared to other 400 speed films from Ilford. Once the film dried, I cut it and then I I scanned it using my X-T2 and converted all of the negatives using Negative Lab Pro inside of Adobe Lightroom. Ilford Delta 400 is a film that renders incredibly highly detailed images. Not as highly detailed as a slower speed film or something like Retro 80S or Delta 100, but still lots of detail in the images, lots of detail on the negative, and as you would expect from a T-grain film, very, very fine grain. And the images also have a good amount of sharpness. Probably my favorite attribute of this particular film stock is the way that it handles contrast. Contrast is more complex and characterful than I've seen from other tabular grain film stocks. The dynamic range is unsurprisingly excellent, with a surprising amount of detail hidden in the shadows on the negatives, at least in the combination of developer that I used. However, I found that the highlights handled a bit more delicately when compared to a 400 speed conventional grain film like Ilford HP5. And this is fairly common among black and white T-grain films. I found that this film works well for all sorts of photography. It's a fairly good general purpose film stock that can be used for anything from landscapes through to portraiture. And I found that I really liked the images that were coming off of Ilford Delta 400. I found that the images had a very pleasing character that appealed really, really well to my taste. And I liked them a lot better than the images that I got off of Kodak T-Max 400, for example. I found that they had more contrast and three-dimensionality. I think that black and white tabular grain films get a bit of a bad reputation, which is, I think, in some cases earned and in others, not so much. But this does come down to personal taste. I find when photographers are ranting about T-grain films, they're usually talking about T-Max films. Those tend to have a bit of a sterile, very clinical and clean look to them, which can be a good thing, but in other cases can also be a bit dull and flat. I like a bit more character and a bit more contrast, and I'm not usually afraid of grain. Now, if you're not necessarily a fan of T-grain films, I would recommend giving Ilford Delta 400 a try. It's a tabular grain film stock that comes with all the benefits of T-grain, but without looking too digital or too sterile. It still has quite a bit of character, and it's often one of the most inexpensive film stocks available for sale, especially when you compare it to Kodak's T-Max films. That's pretty much all that I have to say for now. Please like this video if you think I've deserved it, subscribe if you think I've earned it, and I will see you next time.